Hey y'all, welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx, and tonight we're excited to bring you Tulip Bubble, a game that brings players back to the midst of the time of Tulip Mania in the Netherlands in the mid-17th century. Designed by Koyu and published by Moa Ideas, tonight's game is also sponsored by Moa Ideas, and they were kind enough to send us a uh, review copy of Tulip Bubble. So I'm your host, Edward Euler, happy to be joined by familiar cast of friends. Amanda Euler. Matt McChesney. And we welcome back. Sweater Mike. All right. <laughs> hey. So, so go grab yourself a tasty beverage, get in a comfy chair, join us while we get caught up in the madness of Tulip Mania with Tulip Bubble. Maybe, maybe a Dutch letter, some apple pie, some other ridiculous pastry like that, you bet. That sounds like a good idea. So, let's just welcome everybody watching, both live around the world, as well as after the fact. We really appreciate y'all joining us. So, yeah, tonight should be a lot of fun. So, hopefully uh, this will give you guys a clue as to what the game's about, and make your own decisions on whether or not this is something that interests you. This just in. We kind of dig the game. Yeah. Not a big surprise. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to start the evening tonight by picking mascots. This uh, fine work of art is a piece entitled uh, A Satire on Tulip Mania by Jan Bruegel the uh, Younger from 1640. Uh, in it, he uh, portrays tulip speculators as monkeys dressed in high-class attire of the day uh, with various bad things happening to them. Um, there are tulip speculators being carried off to the grave. There is a sword fight between them. There are uh, monkeys being taken to debtor's court. And don't look and think too hard about what's going on down here in this corner. Okay, so if you look close in the bottom right hand corner, he is showing his lack of appreciation. Yes, he's watering various... the flowers. <laughs> he's watering the flowers. So anyway, we just thought uh, Sweater Mike brought that, thought that would be a really good way to <laughs> kind of introduce. So uh, at the end, we'll figure, yeah, are we the one watering the flowers, one being taken <laughs> to debtor's court, or right. the one being taken to be buried? Yes. All right. So welcome to Tulip Bubble. So players, us, are all Dutch merchants in 1636 trying to score profits by speculating on the tulip market, as well as trying to find rich collectors to cash out the precious tulip bulbs that we all have. <clears throat> So before we get started into how to play, I kind of want to, what are you guys looking at? All right. So we have the market board here, over here on the left-hand side, the different uh, colors of tulips. So we have red tulips, yellow tulips, and white or gray tulips, whichever you would prefer to call them. They are labeled white. The marker is white. However, the actual color of the card is kind of grayish, but there's yellow, red, and white tulips. There is the card market over here on the right-hand side, separated by the next shipment, the new arrivals, and the just sold cards. We have the market events, which we'll cover here in a little while. We have the three collector piles, and then we have the black tulip, which is one of the triggers for the end of the game. There's also a really handy-dandy little round overview that actually explains exactly what you're going to be doing in each round. So that's kind of a, a player aid for all players right there. So now I kind of want to uh, switch cameras over to show you guys the description of the tulip cards themselves. So as you can see, and yeah, we'll just put it down. That'll work. So we have the actual picture of the tulip. The color of it so we have a yellow tulip obviously that is the variety the triumph we also have the uh, the tulip rank and variety so this is a c1 tulip that it will make sense as we go along then we have the collector cards and i apologize that on the actual main camera because and i'm going to show this up close here you can see it's almost like pencil drawings all the detail on the cards 
It's going to be a little difficult to see because it's so thin line, so I apologize about that, but that's why it's over here to explain it to, for y'all, okay? So we have the bonus for when you sell, when you complete the, it's kind of a recipe fulfillment down here. Um, what it is that they want in particular down here, and then there's some flavor text. I desire a uniform color. It's a young man. So there you go. That's the collector cards. Then we have a mix of market of event cards. So obviously what color it affects, what happens. And there's all three different colors there for those. You have surges, you have crashes, and last but not least, we have the bubble bust. So more on these later, but just kind of to give you guys an overview of the different cards in the game. All right, so moving on. So the game takes place over seven to nine rounds. It's a variable end depending on where the bubble bust card actually ends up in the bottom three of the deck over here. Each round is going to consist of the same four phases save for the first round. So I'm going to describe the game as if we're starting the game in the first round. So we're going to start it not in the right order. What I mean by that is the game, the normal phases are the market event phase, then the selling phase, then the buying and cleanup phases subsequently. We're actually going to start by talking about the buying phase because that's how the game actually begins, if that makes sense. So the buying phase. So one other thing I want to point out to players is everybody has a screen. They have three bid markers over here and everybody starts with $20. Okay. To start with. So during the buying phase, whoever is the first player that has the, the game comes with three first players. It's just because probably the punch boards, it had three of these. And so they're just different color. We chose this one cause it looks pretty. So whoever has the first player, let's say it's Amanda in this case, Whoever's the first player, they start, they're going to take two of their bid markers and they can bid on any of the available, the new arrivals or the just sold. They can place a maximum of two of their bid markers the first time around. Then after Amanda goes, then I go, I could bid on the same one, I could bid on a different one, so on and so forth. We go around the table. Then when it becomes Amanda's turn again, she may then if she chooses, to place her third and final marker to be able to bid for these tulips out there. However, it's important to point out <clears throat> that even if Amanda passed during the first time around, she then could place one in the second time around, or she could have placed one the first round and one or zero in the second round, okay? Only one of each player's marker on a card. It doesn't make sense to do something like that, so you're not allowed. Also. Once a marker is placed on a card, you can no longer move that. Obviously, you can't second guess. Oh, wait, I didn't think Edward was going to come over here. Let me move that on. No, no. And if you have no markers available to you, that means you will not bid. If you only have two available, you can only make two bids, so on and so forth. So we keep going around. Let me see a couple of yours, Matt. And let's say for argument's sake, it's like so. And we'll... Mike elected not to bid, let's say. Then we resolve bids. We resolve bids top to bottom, left to right. So anything that doesn't have any bid markers on it, ignore it, move on. So we keep coming down until boom, we get to this. And actually let's show this as the first example. So as the first example, I am the only one here with a, uh, a marker on it. That just means that I must pay market price for that tulip and purchase it. So what is the market price for this card, for this tulip? Well, we see it's a red C. So now we come over here to the market and we see that the red, uh, the red marker and C, where do they intersect? They intersect at the five. I would have to pay five guilders. So from behind my board, I would take five, pay it to the bank, and then I would take this marker back. I would take the card itself place it over here, face up, face down, whatever I want. However, behind that, we're good to go, easy enough. There is another option, which I will get into here in a little bit, but that is what happens if you're the only one in, uh, to have a marker out there. It's important to note that I said must purchase. 
It does not matter if you do not have enough money, you still must purchase it. You can finance, but we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. So now we get into what happens if there's multiple bidders? Well, now there's an auction. It starts with the first player in turn order. So in this case, Amanda's the first player. She does have a marker on there. Then she would be the first bidder. However, if it were me and Matt on there, who's closer to Amanda in turn order, that would be me. I begin the auction, so on and so forth. So in this case, the starting bid for this tulip is going to be one a minimum of one higher what the market value is so what's the market value of this again we have a red tulip in a this time so we find the a the a for all of these is 15 to start where the red is okay so the minimum bid that amanda may choose if she wishes to bid on this is 16 or higher so she bids once then matt can choose to up the bid or pass if once you pass you're out that's that however they can keep going back and forth, back and forth, how, as high as they go until somebody drops up, out. At that point, the, the, other, the winning player must purchase the tulip. If all players pass without bidding, the last player must purchase it. So in this case, Amanda says, ooh, wow, 16. I didn't realize how much that was going to be. I elect to not bid. Okay, Matt is stuck with it. He must purchase that but because there was no auction he can purchase it for 15 which is face value easy enough that makes sense to everybody mm -hmm. that cool all right also <coughs> all losing players may get a bid premium reward as well but more on that in a moment so purchasing i vote okay paying cash like i just did for this one i would put it behind my screen easy enough that's pretty simple or players can finance so what happens? So let's say Amanda started the bid at 16, Matt goes 17, da 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 da. It ends up at 20 for Amanda. Well, at that case, Matt lost. Remember the 20. Mm -hmm. Matt lost. He takes his marker back. Amanda looks down and says, I have the 20, but maybe I, I just want to go ahead and finance it anyway, which you can do. But if you finance it, you must finance the entire amount. So in this case, she chooses to finance this. So she takes the card, keeps her marker on the card, and places it in front of her screen. And you put the amount of money that you owe, because you're financing it from the bank, from the bank on there as a reminder of how much you owe for that tulip bubble. Or for, I'm sorry, for that tulip bulb. At any time during the game, you can buy back a finance tulip as long as the bubble bust card has not shown up. So let's say it's Matt's turn later on in the game. Amanda looks down and says, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, buy that tulip now. Now, only Amanda can. Obviously, it's hers. She's the one who financed it. So what she would need to do is from behind her screen, take 20 guilders pay the bank. Once she does that, these then go back to the bank. She now frees up her bidding token, which is permanently on there while it's financed. That's free. And she'll put this behind her screen. Easy enough. That's and we, financing. And we can have multiple bulbs financed. You can have up, up to three. In right. fact, why? Because you have three bidding tokens if, out there. If you don't like bidding, then that's a great way to make sure you don't. There you go. So then we would continue all the way through. We would resolve any others that have bid markers on it. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So now let's go back real quick to that auction between Amanda and Matt. Amanda won the auction at 20. The value of the tulip bulb at the current market price is 15. So you subtract the market price from the actual price paid, i.e. 15 from 20 is 5. Mm -hmm. Divide that by the number of losing bidders, i.e. 1 for Matt, and that's how much they get, rounded down. Well, 5 divided by 1 is 5, so five, Matt would get 5 guilders just for being a cool guy. Boom, free money. Easy enough. Just for driving the price. Up. However, if Matt and I were in that auction with Amanda and the final bid was 20, it would be 20 minus 15, which is 5, divided by 2, rounded down, meaning you and I, Matt, two. would get 2 bucks each. 
or two guilders. That makes sense? That clear? That happens in every auction in which there are multiple bidders. Exception, if everybody passes, there wasn't really an auction. That makes sense? Because mm -hmm. then they're going to purchase it for face value on the on the tulip mm. itself. Lordy. <laughs> Isn't that an incentive for driving the price up? Exactly. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you might get stuck with it. Right. And that's the key, right? And, and isn't that brilliant? Let's push your luck in a speculation game. It's brilliant. Right. I've got another one of those for later in the game, too. <laughs> All right. So that now is the end of the buying phase. So we put out our markers. We then resolve them top to bottom, left to right. We auction. If there is an auction, you either purchase or you finance. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, uh, a, a bid premium reward possibly in any of the auctions. So that's the buying phase. That's going to be the majority of the, that's the meat of the game kind of. Next is the cleanup phase. The cleanup phase is the market response. Mm -hmm. So whatever cards are left out here in the market, we're going to look at how many of each color. So just indulge me and let's say all of these are gone and these are gone. And this is what's left in the market at the end of a round. At that point, we count up the number of cards in each color. So we'll start with yellow. One, two, three, four. There are five yellow. One, two, three red. One, two, three white. So whichever has the most actually is going to move down in value. So there are five yellow. So yellow would move down one. And you know what? Now that I think about this, just for a better example, indulge for a moment. Let's say it were like this instead. There are six red and five yellow and three white. So in this case, none of these markers can share a location. So what does that mean? The red would drop one because they, all, they, have, the most, they have the most saturated market. The red marker, however, cannot stay there on top of the orange or the yellow, I'm sorry, it drops all the way down. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Then, whichever has the fewest out there, which in this case is the white, bumps up one. Just supply and demand, it makes That's sense. That's all it is. And then at that point, everything left in the new arrivals and the just sold get wiped and go into the discard pile. Cool? That is the end of a round. So now we have to actually go back and talk about the first two steps of the round because after the game starts, we're going to start in the buying phase. Okay, so let me reseed how these were real quick. All right, and we'll put that back where it was. All right, so at the very beginning of a round, outside of the first round, we're going to start with an event phase. So we're going to flip over whatever the top one of these is and do whatever it says. Red rises. Well, red can't move up one. So whoop, it leapfrogs. Look at the value. It just went from 15, 7, and 5, depending on the rank of the tulip, to 26, 13, and 9. Good speculation there if you invested in red. Nearly doubled your money. Right? Then the next shipment would arrive. So these would have been wiped at the end of the round. So the next shipment would then drop down to the new arrivals and then we would reseed the, de uh, the, the next shipment for the next turn. The quantity of cards out here, we're it's always two more than the number of players. We're playing four players. So there's six cards out here. Then the start player will pass to the next player. So whoop, I become first player. Then we go in to the selling phase. It's important to note, it goes event, selling, then buying. So whenever you buy, you're buying for the next turn, okay? So selling, it starts with the new start player and goes in turn order and players sell as much as they want to the market and or collectors. So again, these two would be completely empty. So if I have cards behind, and let's say I had these cards behind my screen and I say, you know what, I'm going to sell these to the market. Well, I sell them at current value. So they're C's and they're yellow. We look at where yellow is, we find C. I would get three guilders a piece for each of these. They would then go down here into the just sold market and this populates the market now for other players to buy. I could always rebuy these if I wish. 
because maybe I think it's going to drop in price because I see all these yellows that are out here and they may end up staying out there during the market or after the market is finished buying. Make sense? In addition to that, we can sell to collectors. So now we're going to talk about these guys over here and then we're almost done. So there is one plus 20 collector. There are three plus 15 collectors and four plus 10 collectors. And what it, this is recipe fulfillment. So all of the collectors are actually described here on the back of the rule book, as well as distribution of cards, the market events and market event descriptions, okay? And the distribution of the market event. So for instance, we'll take the fair lady right here. The fair lady says she wants a B1, a B2, and any C rank tulip, as long as they're all the same color. So this could be all white, all red, or all yellow, but it must be specifically a B1, a B2, and any of the Cs. So let's look here. It could be a B1, so so could be a B1, but it, if I choose this one, it mu everything else must be white. So it could be a C3, but notice there is no B2, which means no one can fulfill that for her in white this round. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you may, instead of selling to the market, you might hold off until you have a full set to be able to fulfill these. When you sell to a collector, you get market value, whatever you're selling them at, as well as the bonus that's up here in the top left-hand corner. The catch, you can never sell a financed bulb either to the market or to a collector because you have to own it first, mm -hmm. right? So you have to buy it back <clears throat> with cash on hand first, meaning if I have this financed and there's 20 bucks or 20 guilders on here, I probably overpaid, but indulge me. I then have to pay for this to the bank and then I can sell it to a collector. I cannot use the money I would have gotten from a collector to pay for the debt that I would have taken for that card. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, so we need to talk about how the game ends. So the game ends one of two ways. Either when somebody purchases the Queen of the Night, the legendary black tulip, it costs 120 guilders. So it's going to be a little bit. We all start with 20 guilders. If multiple players want to buy the Queen of the Night on the same turn, whoever has the most money at that point just is the winner instantly. The other way the game ends is when we draw a market event, and that market event is the bubble bust card. All tulips are worthless that you've purchased and that you have. They are worth nothing. However, if you still have financed tulips, so going back to that example of 20, if you still have financed tulips, you owe that money to the bank. And then whoever has the most money wins. And that's it. That is tulip bubble. The only thing that I did not describe is the setup of the event deck. And what that is, is we're going to, so we have the bubble bus card. You take that out. You have all the other cards here. We're going to shuffle these up. Oops. oops. A little bit more gracefully than what I'm doing. So we're going to shuffle all these up. Remove one face down from the game. Then we're going to take two of those out and I just want to double check that it's two. Mm, yep. Nice three cards. Take two of those, add the bubble burst card into it. Mike, if you'll shuffle those up, those three. So the rest of these, so three, four, five, six, seven. And those go underneath. Yep. And now we have, we're ready for the game to begin. Any. Yeah, if you would, please. There you go. So any questions from the peanut gallery or from anybody at the table? Welcome back, guys. Hi. So there's no limit to the number of tulips in the just sold line, correct? Right. Correct. If need be, we will start a second row just for the camera. So let me give everybody their markers back. 
And it's interesting to note that, as you said, right, you're buying for the next selling round, but once you buy, you have the cleanup phase when the majority tulip decreases in value, you have to get past. And then during the event deck, you have a blind random adjustment to the market that may take place. <coughs> that is true. Yep. So, all right. So we need to randomize turn order. Um, uh, Mike, if you want to do that, take one marker for everybody and any, I'll keep an eye out for any questions. Can you clarify if you sell finance tulips? I thought it was you can sell to the market, but not to collectors when financed. And I will just double check just to make sure that I clarify that. Sure. All right, so Matt is going to start. He will be the first player. We will keep that there. And so remember, we uh, the first thing at the beginning of the game, and I will come back and answer that question, Andrew, in just a moment. Um, after we've sorted everything now, we start the game. The first round begins with the buying phase, as I said. So however, we are going to flip over the first market event and adjust the market. Yes. Just making sure. Oh, there's a crash. <laughs> Price level of the most expensive color is lowered by two. Well, in this case, you can never go off the market. So white actually just dropped one. Okay. I guess tonight, yes, Dave, it's the uh, tulip gallery instead of the peanut gallery. <laughs> it's actually pretty appropriate. Um, there are also, I want to point out, um, you know what? I'll point them out at the end of the game. There are two variants that are in the back of the uh, back of the rules. They're very minor, but you can also do. And before anybody asks, yes, there is hidden trackable information. Everybody, as you guys can see, has their player screens here. So if you prefer to play without them, I'm sure that's up to you. Okay, but as this is, we're trying to play it, you know, per the rules. Um, there you go. Okay, so Matt begins with placing a maximum of two of his bid markers out there. And so what he's contemplating, and this is Matt's first game, right? Mm -hmm. What he's mm -hmm. contemplating, he's looking at the set collection out here, uh, as well as, you know, what value-wise, well, you know nothing can drop in value because it's bottomed out. Yeah. All three of them are bottomed out, right? Okay, one little clarification that Andrew brought up, which I'm glad he did. I misspoke one thing. When you sell a finance tulip back to the bank, you can, if, if you finance $20 and you're selling it for 23, you actually just profit three. So you don't have to have the money. It's only when selling to a collector that you must have the money. Uh, you must buy the tulip back from the bank first. So. Thanks for the clarification, Andrew. I apologize. Everybody okay. is wearing color-coordinated shirts except for Mike. Except for me. Yeah, it's okay. So he's green. Yeah, yeah. Everybody so, else is. Yep. Yeah. Anybody so, that's red, green, colorblind is fine. Yes. <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> so place your bets now as to who you think is going to win. And Matt, begin. All right. Not in the Not up there. market. Only oh. here here. Right, yeah. Oh. This is for next shipment. This is the next turn. So you and uh, an I suppose I should clarify also um, what the three collectors that are out here, and I'll do this as they come up. So the nobleman, he wants an A, a B1, and a B2, all the same color. The fair lady, as I said, was a B1, B2, and any C of the same color. And these are various. This is just how they ended up. And then the young man wants any three C's of the same color doesn't care the rank. Okay? Cool. Oh, going big, are you? Man with a plan. All right. Yeah, well, I was a woman with a plan, and you just took it. Well, you can still do it. Christopher says uh, he's betting on Matt to take second. That's a good idea. Yeah. You should do that. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. We'll see about that. I might end up being the monkey watering the flowers. <laughs> so here, just, and I will think out loud um, and put myself at a bit of, of a disadvantage. So we're starting in the buying phase, right? So what I'm looking at here. Heck, I should have done that. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. No worries. <laughs> so what I'm looking at is there are, the, the next shipment 
is what it is. Like we cannot adjust that market in any way. We cannot reflect or impact that market. So I see there's going to be three red left. There's going to be two yellow and one white. So I'm looking out, okay, I know that those white are going to go away no matter what. I see that uh, this one white and this, by default, already, white is going to be the most rare of the bunch or the, the least populate. There will be the fewest white left. And so therefore, white is going to go up in value. Mm -hmm. So white is going to be worth up here already i know that just by the distribution i mean this is all open information everybody knows that so i'm just trying to give folks an idea on what it is that i'm thinking about so i will go ahead and bid on a parrot i'll go ahead and jump in this broken tulip I, I, which I it's beautiful the striated I, I really like the artwork in this matt you may in the second turn around the board now or around turn order you may place your third marker if you wish Jeez. and and i'll tell you what i'm thinking there since i didn't tell you the first time in the first game the the plus 20 was a pretty important collector and it's the one that requires a tulips there are fewer a tulips in the decks than other tulips and they are the keys to forming the better sets over there Look at this. We're all the way down at, at, at what is it, 15 gilders yep. there? So the A's are going to be the keys to this board, I think. We'll see. Maybe I'll be in debtor's prison. Um, yeah. Amanda's not going to get in on that by herself. Okay. So now, obviously, we can't bid on the top row. So we start top to bottom, left to right. So we go, nothing here. Matt must buy this. Matt, what's the value on that? It's uh, five. It is. So you look at the yellow, B, that's five. He paid. So he gets his bid marker back. He puts that behind his screen and good to go. Now we go here. So the first player in turn order, so this is Mike and Amanda. Mike will start the bid on that one. So the current value is 15, which means if he elects to start the bid, the minimum bid is 16. And remember, you can always bid more than you have because you have the finance option. Start the bid at 16. 17. Um, 19. 22. 23. Dang it. <laughs> Hashtag poker face. Um... Darn it. One too many. All right. So I'm paying 23. All right. So he's paying 23. Uh, he doesn't have 23 because we all start with 20. So he'll put. And actually, huh. if you would, Mike, put it up where the 50 is so folks can see what your finance <laughs> tulips are. As Mike likes to do, starts out with a loan. Right. You bet. All right. So he started at 23. But Amanda now is going to get a total of eight guilders from the bank because that is her um, uh, the reward for uh, being a part of the bidding. All right, so now we move on to the next one. This is me and Amanda. M Amanda will start the bidding. Current or first bid is? Uh, three. Well, four. Right, current value is three because white mm -hmm. B. So current bid is four or first bid must be minimum four. Five. 12. 13. Pass. Mission accomplished. All right. So 13. So I made 10 bucks on that here. from the bank. So she's going to pay the 13. So I actually just got this from the bank. So I'm back at plus 10 to the good guys. All right. Matt must buy this. And it's going to be yellow three. C3. There you go. Sir, your tulip coming over here. So this one starts with Matt since he's the first player. Minimum bid is going to be four if he elects to bid on it. Five. Eight. Edward. Uh, I'll go nine. Ten. Pass. Pass. 
I'm okay with that. So I will. I will go. I will go eleven. Pass. All right. So I will go ahead and pay the eleven. So here. So I'm paying eleven out of my coffers. So there we go. Then, oops, I missed on that one. So the difference there, 11 is 8 divided by 2. They each get 4 apiece for that. They get their markers back. I get my marker back as well. And the parrot now comes behind for the simple fact that I paid cash. I did not finance it. And we're over explaining it here the first round just to make sure that it's crystal clear to you guys. The pace will pick up after we get going. So, Current bid order, as you can see here, minimum bid is going to be 16 for anybody that chooses to bid on that, starting with Sweater Mike. 16. 17. Yeah, the reward is spread, divided, rounded down. It is. Um, well, I mean, I'll go 20. I'm okay with break even. 21. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Pass. All right. Twenty-four. Ooh, really? Not so fast, my friend. Yeah. I'll pass. All right, so Amanda, are you paying cash? No. All right, so twenty-four goes onto that tulip and drop it down a little so folks can see it. There you go. So 24, the difference there is nine divided by two for me and Mike. That's four and a half rounded down, four. Let cool. Get, I need 24. For yep, Randy. onto the tulip, exactly. <clears throat> Apologize about the coughing guys. I'm still trying to get over this, this uh, respiratory infection. All right, so that is all of the resolving of the bids. So now we go into the cleanup phase. So the first things first, we do the market response. Count the number of tulip cards in every color. Well, the most moves down first. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Yellow, one, two, three, four, five. So yellow would move down first. It can't because it can't go past zero and it can't share a spot. So instead, what's the fewest? Well, we already covered that. White is going to go up. So white goes up all the way up to the four spot. Awesome. Then tulip removal. So all the new arrivals and the just sold to get wiped. So all those and all those go into the discards. All right. So now we go back into the beginning of the event phase. So it's a new round. So the event phase first is a uh, market. So Ooh. another crash. So the price level of the most expensive color is lowered by two. Oh, snap. So Ooh. go back. I'm so sorry, you two. Well, I oh, paid I'm, cash and I, I... I'm good. I'm, I'm not hurting as bad as Amanda, so I'm okay with that. So next, then, we go into the shipment arrives. So all the next shipment move down to the new arrivals. And everybody that keeps talking about the, the tulips being too large, it's because they're laying down. Whenever you're not, whenever we're not streaming, they stand up. Oh, yeah, up, yeah, yeah. Normally, and it they're would be, not, they and look actually, fine. we can, here, let me, I just did that because the overhead camera. Oh, you guys can see that fine. So yeah, we'll just do it that way. Just the That's color, fine. really. You don't really yeah. need to know the shapes. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. That'll work. Yeah, they're great for, because yeah. at a quick glance, you can see the price. It okay. So big. Cool. All right. Good enough. Although so, Ian O'Toole would be mad from the person sitting here. because now, now you can't see the market, right? Yeah. So <laughs> six more now come out in the next shipment. And then we pass the first player marker, and that's the end of the event phase. Cool. All right. There we go. And for those that are curious, I will mention here the tulip distribution, the A rank, there are two of each in every color. All right. Then in the Bs, there are three copies of two varieties in each color, meaning there are three B1s, B2s, 
be, uh, of each color. And then for the C's, there are three C1s, C2s, and C3s in each color. Okay, so it's an even distribution between the three colors as well. So that's the end of the, uh, the first phase. Now we go into the selling phase, beginning with the new start player. So Mike, do you wish when he sells, he can sell, he must, it's only once around, so he sells everything that he wants to sell, either to the just sold market or to a collector. And when you sell to a collector, it must be the full set that they want. I own one tulip that is deeply, deeply in hock and deeply underwater, so I shall decline to sell any of my investments. <laughs> Squirrel? Me as well. Okay, I elect to not sell right now. I also elect to not sell right Okay, now. well, that's the end of selling. And now we go back into buying, starting with Sweater Mike. Note, he has one of his markers locked up. So he only has two bidding markers. He can place them both if he wishes the first time around. He could place one of them the first time, a second the second time around, or he could place none the first time and place a maximum of one the second time. Average playtime without the teach with four, I think we got it done with five new players, um, an hour and 15 minutes maybe, um, after the teach. So you're talking no more than an hour, probably well less. And I'm not sure, I didn't look online uh, what the, what the playtime, what uh, they said on BGG for that. The box says 50 to 70 minutes. Oh, there we go. So there you go. Three to five players. 50 to 70 minutes. Cool. Good call, Amanda. Bidding on the slumlord. All right. The uh, Verita Flora? Sure. I think is how you say it. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Dave, to sell, if, if Sweater Mike wanted to sell his A tulip, he could have sold it for 15 meaning he would have had to have paid $8 to get out from underneath that tulip. Mm -hmm. When he sells to a collector, he would have to pay the full 23 in cash first, mm -hmm. then he could sell it as part of a set to a collector. So hopefully that's clear. We asked last time, was there no interest payments or anything? This tulip mania bubble was one of the first times there was financing and there was no mark to market or spread at that time. So the game is true to the market at the time. That makes a lot of sense. That's pretty cool. And also, so Amanda is limited. Tulips are as good as money. That's right. You got tulips as good as money. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's just crazy to me. It's not like it's gold, you know. It's not like they last very long. I know, they don't. <laughs> It's very sad. Mm. So this entire episode took place over the winter of 1636 to 7. Yep. So the craze started in November and the crash began in February. Wow. Pretty crazy, huh? All right. Uh, Mike, do you wish to place your final one? Absolutely. There's going to be a number of auctions just because nobody sold that round, which did not happen the last time we played this. We had actual sales go on the first round. there was round. a lot more movement. There was. So the game varies, right? Yippers. All right. Squirrel? Mm -hmm. And that's actually a fair point as well. Paul says that... Uh, Losing the bidding token is a penalty in and of itself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Happy to happy to be doing it as well, Dave. Thank you. Oh. There you go. Get in there and drive it up. Don't worry, I'll return the favor. Oh yeah, <laughs> Matt. I don't see that, I Adam. I don't either. I, 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 I'm trying to see it, but I don't see it. It's a panda face eating bamboo leaves. Nope, not seeing it. I see it. Okay. Those well. are the eyes. Oh, oh. great. Now I can't unsee it. Thanks. 
Yeah, if you look at it up there, it's in season Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Om um, nom nom. Right. Hmm. You know, James, it's funny you bring that up. We actually had a discussion on that very thing about irrational, uh, irrational behavior when it comes to auctions and such. We had a discussion on that on the Slack channel earlier today, actually. All right, so that is all our bidding markers. So we resolve left to right. So we start here, Sweater Mike, mm -hmm. and then Matt. And current value, we're looking at, what, uh, five? First bid, six, if you want to bid, fellas. The red is five. All right, six it is. Open six. Pass, I just want to make you make pay six. Okay. It was better than throwing it away. Six all right. Gilder. So he, Matt gets a buck. Because six minus five, one divided by one, one. So starting with Amanda on this one, opening bid is minimum two. Two. Five. That's three free money right there for you. Yeah. Why well, get three free money and you could get five or seven? <laughs> well, she might get stuck with it if that's the case, because that's free money and coming back Ed this way. And doesn't have it, and I'm happy either way. I'll <laughs> <laughs> do six. Uh, seven. That may be my final offer, just Pass. so you know. All right, so I will I will go ahead and pay my seven. I just hope nobody is actually looking at the screen trying to cheat here. Mm -hmm. There we go. So there's my seven for it. So Amanda gets her bid token. And six. And Amanda gets six from the bank, and I get this. Okay, done. And now it goes me and Matt. Current bid here, we're looking opening bid six. Sure, let's go with it. Seven. Eight. Nine. Hmm. I pass. I will take four profit. Oop. Pay the one. Get the five. I will pay ten and take one back. There you go. And we've, done, we've been here before, ma'am. Yeah, have, sir. <laughs> Cur uh, opening bid must be four or higher. Four. Uh, I'll go six. <coughs> seven. Sometimes a tulip is just a tulip. Uh, you said seven. I did. I will pass and I will pay one and take a five. And are you paying for mm -hmm. it? Okay. All right, so now, yeah. Matt. I will pay my five. You must, in fact, yep. And Mike already took care of his. Wow. Nope. Not much of a market left there, huh? Nope. Okay, so now we adjust price levels. So what, where are we? We're at three for red, two for yellow, one for white. And I always get this wrong, so I want to double check the rule book. The, the, whichever down first. down first, which can. nothing can move mm -hmm. down, which would be red, but it cannot. So again, whoop, white moves up. Okay. Uh, then there's tulip removal. None. First time we've ever seen mm -hmm. that Wiped as out. well. All right. Nobody is going to uh, be able to, or the game does not end. We go to the next round. An event phase happens. Red goes up by one. Sweet. Now we see a little variation in the market, finally. Then, after the market event has happened, the shipment arrives. Mm -hmm. Yep. Six new cards come out. <laughs> DJ Hopscotch. Jerks. Just ordered one of the last four copies Miniature Market had. You keep making me buy games. Sorry. Not really. Sorry, not sorry. Yep. Hmm. Here's the thing. Have you bought a game after watching one of our playthroughs and, like, been upset at yourself for it? Because if not, then the correct answer is, thanks. My wallet hates you, but thank you. That's okay. First player. Uh, first player moves. And now we go into a selling phase, starting with you, Amanda. Do you wish to sell? It kind of does. 
does, Matthew. The whole game has that old style of book printing to it kind of look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the... The, it's gorgeous. The art it reminds right. me of Pine Mouth Flowman a mm -hmm. little bit. It, it really yeah. does, yeah. The, there's a... It's botanical art. There you go. Mm -hmm. And Arboretum as well. All of those. Mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I choose not to. Games. Um... I'm looking what all's out there. I'm debating. So for those, you guys don't look at the screen, for those curious, so I started with that amount of money, so I have that in profit plus those. All right, now keeping these face up so you guys can see it, just to show how I've worked this. So that said, now you can look to where if I sold, I would get that amount as well. But I kind of like the idea of being able to go for some of those, maybe. Ah, because if I... S you know what? I like not to sell. I actually have a plan in place. Matt? I would love to. Okay, Matt is going. Are you I selling? I'm selling to my fair lady. Oh, okay. So wow. hold on. Me? So here. So she wants a, a all the same color, B1, B2, and a C of any. Well done. So first off, you're going to sell these for market value. So that's going to be a total of 10, 13, hmm. plus 15. Mind if, mind if I trade that for me? Sure, go for Because I forgot that was a C of any. No, no, no. It's all the same all color. The same. All, all the same. All the same C, color. A C of any number. Not there right. you go. Okay. Right. There you go. Never mind. So Matt's going to sell the Bs for five apiece, the C for three for a total of 13 plus 15, which is 28. But here is the one thing, and I'm not sure if I actually mentioned this or not. So he gets a total of 28 in profit. This card, out of the game. And these do not go to the sold market they went to a private collector, mm -hmm. so it only makes sense that these are actually uh, into the yeah. discard pile. Immediately, the next collector flips over, and we have the Madame, which she is the first one you can see has different colors. So the Madame, ma Madame, whichever, she wants three Bs <coughs> of any rank, however, three different colors of B rank. Okay, cool. B rank. And again, there are 120. There are now two 15s left since the third one is gone. And there are four 10 rank or 10 plus 10s. Okay. All right, Mike, you're selling? Taking profit. Cool. So he gets a total of 18. Cs. 18. Nice. <clears throat> Okay, so that's all the selling. So now we go back into the bidding, starting with Squirrel. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good, pretty good run. Uh, Mo Ideas is on there, Andrew. I forgot they did the original Jiraku. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. <laughs> Matthew set the over-under. Uh, at four hours from the beginning of the stream for when uh, Miniature Market was going to run out of copies. There's only two copies left now. But now there's only two left. That's funny. Yeah, uh, Steve, we actually spoke about Draku a year and a half, ago. two years ago. Um, when it first came out, we bought it because of the artwork and not many trick-taking area majority games out there, which was really pleased by it. So bought it for the artwork, stayed for the gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so again, this is the last time I'm going to do this out loud because I feel like this is a disadvantage, but I'm looking at what we can't bid on. There's going to be three red and three yellow left no matter what. So the question is, what's going to go down in value? It's either going to be yellow or red. Red right now, it looks like, for the simple fact that um, there's only going to be a maximum oops, of four yellow left. Unless... Hmm.
Tony Simpkins says, nope, make it one. I just got mine. <laughs> hey, Matthew, if you'd put a link, if you would, pledge HC, that's how you uh, get access to the Slack channel. All right, Amanda, second time around, if you wish. Amanda's first, which means I have one left, Mike has one left, and Matt has one left. Matt is motivated. Yep. So the reason I feel like I can get away with that and not lose value on the red right now is Matt is motivated because he's going to owe two of them, own two of them for sure. So Matt probably wanted that, but he kind of has to bid on that because otherwise red goes down in value because all the yellows are going to be gone. Actually, hmm, let me clarify that since this is Matt's first game. Because there will be tied for two, uh, both move down. So if he bids on the... Red's going down no matter what. Yellow may or may not also go down at the end of the round. Okay, so mm -hmm. just to be clear, because if they're tied for the most they will go bo both go down. If all three are tied, there's no movement happens. And no Thanks, mirror, Steve. you get all of it. You get the, the value of the collector as well as market value. There's an there's a example in the book that I looked at to make sure before I said that. For what? No. Mira is asking about why are you getting market price plus the collector? Yes. It's either or, or. No, no, it's both. It's combined. That's the advantage of selling to a collector. So you sell, so this guy who wants three C's of any color, let's say right now it were three C's of yellow, you would get nine guilders for the three C's plus the 10 for a total of 19. Okay. Yippers. Oh, that is an interesting, interesting development. Why is that? <clears throat> well, I sort of own this A here. I'm on this B alone. Now I'm on this other B alone, which would nominally complete this guy. If you can afford it, because you have to get it out of Hawk. But I will be in Hawk not only... <laughs> no, I'll still be in Hawk on the A-tip. Yep, up yep, so, yep, exactly. All right, so now we resolve. So, Mike, you owe 13 on um, that one. And Manager Market is now sold out. <laughs> 13. I hope you're mentioning the show. That's all I'm asking, y'all. So, uh, Amanda, you're going to owe five on this one. And the bidding begins here, Amanda. Uh, minimum bid is eight. eight. Yes. Is that what you're bidding? or mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll go ten. Something else we haven't announced is we're going to be giving away a copy of this. Uh, he, uh, not on the live stream, mm -hmm. but at the end of the live stream, we're going to tell you guys how to enter, and we'll go from there. Okay? So, thanks to Moa Ideas for the giveaway as well. I'll have to duck out. Um, no, we'll just have me and Miles. That's fine. Mm -hmm. What did you do? 11? Uh, I did... Or 10. Go 11. Yeah. Pass. Adam, pick me! So I will pay 11 cash for it. And I'll get 6? Uh, you will get 4 for that. Thank you. Okay, so now it's Matt and I, and I am first. Uh, minimum bid of 16 for that puppy, huh? Hmm. 
Mm. Man, that hurts. Um, I'll go 20. Pass. Oh. Right. Four for you. All right. I'll go ahead and finance that one. Thank you. Excuse me. So there for folks. Now you can see that one here. Actually, you guys can see it just fine there. So that one is financed for me. Okay. Mike's paying for that. I will also... That backfired. Uh, not really. It's not... It's not yeah, a little bit, I guess it did. Um, so I will finance this for 26. Not afraid to finance this game, are we? Nope. Yeah, we're fans of Martin Wallace. And Mike, you owe... Matt, Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. 18, nine. if yep. you wish. So there is not... No, nine for that one, and... A so, ten and one back for the other. <clears throat> All right. Market is, again, wiped out. So we adjust price levels. What's left? So it's three and three. That drops and that drops. There's no white left. White goes up. Boom. Done. Now we draw the market event. Yeah, market Next first. round. Okay. Yellow goes up. Yay. Okay, we pass the first player marker after we do that. So I will, so you all know I'm first. There we go. Two white, three white, four white. Whoa. Dang, man. Flooding the market next turn. Just not the right letters. <laughs> all right, so now we are into selling. All right. How so, into selling are we? Yeah, well, we'll find out. So yellow for me, I could sell. Um, so I have a yellow A and I have a red A, both at 15, which would not be profitable to sell those. So I elect not to. However, I do have some other stuff that I don't want to mention. Um, the problem here is turn order on this is I'm first now. I would like to be first next turn. And that's the problem. Let me do some quick math real quick. There, there. I'm okay with that. That will go. It'll be there. I'm gonna go ahead and sell a white C for a total of nine, make it 10, please. Thank you. And I am done selling. All right. I would like to sell to another one of these people. In fact, that young man right there. Okay, so throw them out here so folks can see. So you need three Cs of different, of any number, but same color, which obviously he has. So that's gonna be a total of 15 plus 10 for 25. Oh, sorry. Those go away. Mm -hmm. He goes away. And we have a new collector. We have the tavern owner, which he wants one of every color. All C's does not carry care about the rank. I am thinking of planting a lively garden on a budget. All right. So are you done selling, sir? I have nothing left. So you would like to sell I no more. I would like to sell no more. Mike. So, oh, wow. is the game making sense to y'all? Everything clear? You guys able to follow along? Furrowed brow over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I have everything I need to sell to that collector, except capital. <laughs> <laughs> I almost... Don't spew almost. on the gaming, <laughs> on the gaming table. <laughs> almost. I have two of his three orders in my hands. Uh, one in the bank. That is poor play. I'm telling you, I'm going for the debtor's prison monkey. Um, Rudy says, I missed the beginning of the stream, and I don't want to miss seeing Sweater Mike fall deeper and deeper into debt. When does the game end? Game ends when somebody either buys the Queen of the Night for 120, or in the bottom three of the cards, there's a bubble bust card. 
No sale. All right, Squirrel. Okay. I am selling a lot of things. Okay. All right, I'm gonna sell this. To the market? To the market. Okay, so so you're going to get 26 minus 24. Get, Hold on, folks can't see that. Oh, so I get two. There you go. So Amanda owes 24. She's selling it for 26. She gets two profit. This is In this case, she does not have to have the cash on hand because she's selling to Le Market. Okay, now. Okay. I'm sure Mo idea ships <coughs> friend to uh, to the UK if you're interested. I kind of like that idea as well, Paul. He says it'd be cool if turn order changed each round based on how much you spent each round, a la brass. That's mm. kind of clever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mira says it's all clear here, but I'm I'm close to the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Very I'm curious, do they teach about, teach this in any, like, is this something that is learned about in school or anything like that, Mira? That's it. Whoa. I, I changed my mind. Whoa. I changed you, my mind. You tease us with, oh, I'm going to sell a whole lot. And, and then one? I, I, well, I sold one for a lot. <laughs> Just changed I, my words around, okay? Two guilders is not a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So that's all the selling. So we go into buying. Well, you guys will notice I have two markers locked up. So I could either place this now or later if I wish to. Hmm. Man, this stinks. This is really hard. Um, mm. So I can't... So what? It will be there. That goes... So that goes down. Up. There. Yes, I will. Go big or go home, right? Hmm. Adam says they learned about it in business school. That makes sense. Sure. James, I never learned of this, but then again, I never went to business school and my major in college was U.S. history. Not Dutch history. <laughs> Fair enough. Had two really good plans that, that came through, and now I'm not sure what to do. Oh, oh, like you, you're like okay. So you, I saw those done. two paths, and I went, okay, now what? All right. um, money, money is good. Remember, money is victory points, mm -hmm. right? So, speed is life, altitude is life, and <laughs> money is life. The answer is forty-two. Okay, Mira says, I had a little bit in history and literature class, it was a long time ago. What? You're like 26. It wasn't that long ago, right? There's my one token, yo. Yep, same here. That's yeah, another interesting thing. It's I, I have a different plan now because you guys have so many tokens locked up. Yep. You are electing to just place one? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, I, I elect to place no more, i.e. I cannot. I actually messed up. I was supposed to place two last time. Yeah. Brian says we, we learned about it in mortgage banking the hard way. Hmm. Not supposed to, but you could have place the second yeah. so um amanda you can I place one actually am going to pay down this tulip here which i have 13 in the hole 
So I'm taking back seven to take this marker and I'm placing it here. That's what I forgot to do. Good call. Good call. Because remember, you can, hawk. Yep, you, can buy, you can yeah, buy back finance tulips <laughs> at any moment in well. the game. It's gonna no, it's not. No, it's not first player. Right. Yeah, it'd be interesting just to just to finance a cheap one, just to throw people off. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna finance this cheap one. Like nah. right, right, yeah. You gonna see that happen? Dean <laughs> Dean says I heard about this on Maybe. heavy cardboard. That's pretty funny. All right, cool. Uh, so we're done. Pay up. Yep. Everybody gets their stuff. Yep. Pay, pay face up. value. I have to finance mine for twenty six, please, from the bank. Twenty six the markers. Oh, I'm very interested to see where you're going with this, Ed. We'll see if it works out. This I, one is I, five. It may not. There's fourteen. This so, one's financing. Um This is new and I don't know if this is terribly exciting, but this in here, so we'll see how that works out. Okay. So um, I'm still going to be in debtor's prison, but you're going to be the one to carry it off to the graveyard. <laughs> all right, so that's all the buying. Now we adjust price levels. So yellow, oh, I'm sorry, check that. White will go down. And then yellow will go up. Yeah. Okay, so now... Yes, okay. Uh, discard anything in the new arrivals and just sold. So we finally have one to discard. And we go into a new round. So a new market event first. Ah. So wait, rises. Son of a glory to Whoa. run, game. Chalk it up. And that's why we call it speculation. Yeah. You know, see... This is 100% on me because I actually meant to, before I flip that card, do something about this. Three white. <laughs> Good lord. Mm. So, I guess I can talk Four about white. it since my plan has been thwarted. Well, it, it's kind of clear is by it? the reaction. No, no. Actually, I, I can lay out exactly what was going to happen. That's First player... Benchy moves. So I was actually going to be able to get the nobleman this turn mm -hmm. because, and here I'll just throw oh, it out there so the folks turn? no, like this time coming up unless you were going to be able to. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll take it this time. Oh, then, then it wouldn't have been available to me, but here is what my plan was, okay? And what that was, was I was going to take that 20 there to then pay off this one to have that money and then sell the white um, I'm sorry then sell the the right and use the money to then sell the yellow to then get the white out of hawk to then be mm. able to sell to the collector gotcha. so but I screwed up because I waited until no, actually, it didn't mess me up, did it? Um, I'm confusing myself. I'm just going to shut up and sell. Matt, go ahead, selling. <clears throat> I choose not to this turn. Okay. But Mike, go ahead and cheat. But you're pretty. Yeah, right? Seriously. All right. These two B tulips are being sold. Okay, so that looks like 26 minus 5. Is 21, 22, 23. Which gets that out this. of hawk. And then ABB. Hey, hold on. Folks can't see it. There you go. And he's selling these three to the big time collector. So that is going to be ABB. So that's 29, 49 total. 50. Mm. Well. Oh, well. So. No more 20 collector. Womp womp. Squirrel? I'm going to sell to the madame. Okay, so she wants three Bs of three different colors, which you obviously have. So that's going to be a total of 29 and 7 is 36. 51 total 
for that set. And then... You had to up me by one, didn't you? And then you're Nicely selling done. these as mm -hmm. well? All right, so Amanda is going to get nine and 16 more. Filthy lucre. That's me. All right, so now it's my turn. So retire now. You're Wait. flush with cash. Oh, oh yeah, flip that. Get a call. <laughs> All right, so we have the clergyman who I wish to decorate my church with a solemn courtyard. He wants three bees, all one color. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to sell the A. I owe 20. I get six. Six net? Yep. Then I will sell, since this is not worth it anymore. Yeah, I got confused in my head, so sorry about that. 26, 33, net 7. So here, just give me one more. Okay. Net 7. Thank you. And... Yeah, I am going to. Then I will sell these two as well. Wow. Which is going to be a total of 27 more. So here's, hold on, 30, 40, and 50. Filthy lucre. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead, now that we've done all that, I'm just going to go ahead and sit on that for right now. So we're a little bit more flush. There you go. Cool. So... That is the end of selling. Yep. So now we go into buying, starting with Matt. You can place up to two markers, remember? So we're up to, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26. 26 within here. There's a big glory to Rome to uh, Xfinity for our internet dropping during our uh, Founders of Gloomhaven, the first one. And then, uh, and then we got told glory to Rome from a viewer for purchasing a game. For, forcing him uh, to purchase a game. So that's why that one's over there in black. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> All right. So I'm still debating. De debating. I am not going to win this game. Hashtag good teacher. I'll be second. <laughs> <clears throat> so, and just as a reminder to everybody at home, we have... Five rounds maximum left. Uh, actually, technically four because the two the bubble burst will be one of those three bottom cards, or if somebody buys the Queen of the Night. All right, so Amanda is up, so we'll stall for a little bit. So. Yeah, it's funny how I got lost in my head about that. Like, it didn't require me to do anything because I was going to make the profit. I actually made more money by the white going up like it did and just totally uh, confused myself. Because, it's I, I mean, it's its essentially arbitrage, or arbitrage mm -hmm. right? So, buying on the, uh, buying on the come. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that the... Um, the 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 artist for this Jan Bruegel the younger right is the grandson of uh, Peter Bruegel the elder who is the author of one of my favorite pieces of art Tower of Babel oh okay. he's also a Flemish painter from this era well from a century before he's the grandfather well grandfather right yeah yeah, yeah. the elder of course yeah. right well the 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 elder plus right mm -hmm. welcome back. So now I have a reason to go to Vienna. Thank you. Well, like you needed that reason, though, well, seriously. true. It's like this one's there. Tell so I sold a ton of stuff as okay. well. Got a bunch of money. 
and the bids are as you see. It is your honor, ma'am. Paul asked me how the cough is. It was horrible this morning, but thankfully it's it's it seems to have leveled out. Uh, tomorrow's my last day of my round of steroids and um, antibiotics, so it's been remarkably better tonight. I mean, I've coughed, what, once or twice, I think, during the stream? So, yeah, it's definitely getting better. The doc did say around the weekend I should be better. So still have my cough medicine and still have my inhaler that he gave me. And used my inhaler a lot today, but that definitely helped. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, okay. Mm -mm -mm. We'll go there. And there. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Yeah, again, it's very clear to us here. It's just, it's very thin drawing mm -hmm. on some of this. So the 120 that's here, mm -hmm. um, it's very clear. It's just, it's it's thin. So with the overhead camera, even though it's at 1080p, still mm -hmm. can be a yeah, little I mean, hard to see. If you right? zoomed in. They'd be yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, Andrew, if you really no, enjoy... Sweater Mike's uh, knowledge dropping. You need to go back to the Monopoly episode. <clears throat> yep. And yes, really, I'm not kidding. Seriously. I have a nomination for next year's. Oh, excellent. Uh, I elect to not get out of Hawk and sell my last one. So we're done. So we start with the auction here, starting with Matt. Uh, minimum bid is six if you wish to partake. Let's go seven. Ten. You said ten? Yeah. Oh, I'll go eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Pass. Pass. All right, so he takes it for thirteen, a difference of eight. That's four apiece. I'll take a nickel, please. Yeah, me too. And Mike, you paying it outright for it? Do you get your yes. Okay. And I'm paying seven, uh, what was it, 13? Yes, sir. Okay, 37 change. I love that everybody's calling it the panda. <laughs> uh, so hold on, let me, um, all right, so the next one, Amanda here. Next one is Mike, you're looking at 11. Okay, 11. And Squirrel, you got five on that one. Comes over here to minimum bid of 10 for everyone not named Edward. Fifteen. Pass. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Can I just hold on? <laughs> <laughs> Twenty. Twenty-one. Okay. <laughs> Matt's like, oh, like a maestro over here. <laughs> Keep coming. Right. Uh. I bow to your superior yeah. ping pong championship Thank skills. Thank you. So what was that? 21? 21. So here's 51. Okay, so 30 back to Amanda. 21 is looking at 12, so six apiece for you, fellas. And everybody paid cash. And by everybody, I mean Amanda. Then on this one, I owe seven. I will pay cash 
on that. I need three back, please. And finally... That one, I owe 11. You do, sir. So we'll go and move, since that was the last one. Before we do any further, I want to answer the question regarding uh, the panda or the queen of the night. At the beginning of the buying phase, at this point in every round subsequent, what we will do is, would anybody like to purchase the queen of the night? If any one person says yes, the game will end. If multiple people say yes, they just show how much money they have. Whoever has the most money wins. Okay? So that's how, and this would be at the beginning of a buying phase going forward. Clear? Good? Cool. Otherwise, it's when the bubble burst mm -hmm. card comes out. All right. So that's the end of the buying phase. So we adjust the price levels. So looks like white's dropping. Yeah? Mm hmm so as I planned, and that's why I didn't get this out of Hawk right here, because you're about to see what happens here. So white drops, then red only has one. Red's bumping up and oh, somebody's closer. So all these go away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. This is why we can't have nice things, Eddie. There. Dave, it was probably the table. If one of us leans on it, it switched Touchy. a little bit. Okay, so I, hold on before you just, I mean, just for right. Surge, price level on the cheapest color is raised by two. Whoa. Well, now. More white. More <laughs> white. <laughs> We're about to go through the whole deck. Mm -hmm. There we More go. More white. All right, now we go uh, past the first player marker, which we've already done. Um, Mike, bring that up so folks can see by the 50, the first player marker. Yes. There you go. So, Mike, it is your honor to sell first, sir, well, if you wish. Uh, since I had insufficient gramba to win that last auction. Um, oh, and no, the creaky door sound actually is I, I hit an extra button on the software. So that, that's actually what it was. I'm sorry about that. The sound, it comes through the speakers on the that. I double tapped. Mm. We'll All right. Take profit on 13. that. 13. If I, indeed I made any profit on that. Yeah, I could not allow you to win that. So. So different C's. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the tavern owner, all different colors, all C's, regardless of the rank. Yeah, so. 33, 43. Yeah. <clears throat> that's, that's the one I was going after, too. And I was, should have got it last time. But I forgot to bid two things. <laughs> 33. <laughs> All right, oh, so no, sorry. Yeah, yeah you're right. And tavern owner is gone. So, now we have the homely servant. Master demands variety in a single color. So one color, C1, C2, and C3 for a plus 10. Are you finished with your selling? Okay, Amanda says yes. Um, oh my goodness. I will go ahead and get rid of this guy now for 26 is what I owe. I will take 33. So net seven. seven. So one buck, please. Or one Thank gilder. Been here before. All right. I get my third marker, but man, that's terrible. And one moment. Uh, yeah, I, can't I think I will go ahead and get rid of that as well. Yep, there it is again. Sorry, guys. i got to fix that. Um, so, red B for 16, I have, uh, I'll do a 25. So, there's nine back. Thank you. Oof, doing terrible this game. And, Matt, I am finished. Well... Oh. These were going to go for that, but I'm just going to sell them all anyway, because I bought them all at market value, and the market went up, so... There you go. All right, so... Cut and run, cut and run my tulips. <laughs> my pretties. Uh, so you're looking at 33. Oh, I'll take a 25. Makes me feel better. And yes, Andrew, um, one other thing. If you cannot, if you have anything financed, you cannot buy the panda, i.e. the queen of the night. All right. So we go into the buying now, starting with Sweater Mike. 
Oi, boy. Yeah, problem solved. Four cards left. Tulip, or the bubble burst, bottom three. Tulips are worth nothing if that ever rears its head. He bit already. You, it's in me. fact, did. <laughs> <laughs> the plan of someone destined for the debtor's prison. Been yeah, like a I, monkey. Been my, like a monkey, Ed. My, mine has not gone well to, today at all. I'm letting down Paul, Yeah, that's too. not happening, Amanda. I <laughs> assure you there is no way you were going to get away with that. Uh, check that. There. So maybe we, we can offset each other on one. <laughs> Mira says, more than one glory to Rome, Dutch tulips, and make the most money? So I need to get this. This game needs to be in my collection. Should have brought pastry. Yeah. After you've done All this we're like, missing is Stroopwafel. Yeah. yeah. After you've done this for about a year, you, you kind of need to keep track of the... Well, you've already got a thing keeping track of the glory to Rome, so you have to have a glory to Rome special where you just play the ones that's gotten the most. Right. That's funny. Well, actually, I could just run down to the basement and get the Stroopwafels that Rolf and Yolanda brought us. Mm -hmm. That's true. Designer of Wildcatters, second edition, just showed up today. Mm. Coming next week. Oh, we got to do that Monday. Come on, we got to do that <laughs> Monday. Why Monday? <sighs> because I'm not here on Tuesday evening. Well, nobody said anything about Tuesday either. <sighs> got the rest of the week. You, you, you got the rest of the week. If you stream it after Tuesday, I will tune in and oh. I will heckle you mercilessly. It makes me sad. It makes me sad, too. That's all right. <laughs> Not happening Monday. <laughs> no. Gosh. So what are you thinking? I wish I knew. Paul, Paul asks, uh, what were you saying, it frustration, if you stream Glory to Rome? Arkwright. No, that that will be um, one of the uh, heavy cardboard glory to Rome. Oh yes, <laughs> video. Will. So, so oh, then yes. you can where, say whatever you want. To where we can say whatever we want. Yes. To the hey, praetors, Tim, welcome. To the praetors, we will say glory to Rome. Yes. <laughs> but to one another, <laughs> something else. Go fornicate. Yeah. With things. Go hang around I columns. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing, but. Let's get down on a little bit of whatever this business is. All right. Let's go get down. So, in other words, I'm just going to mooch a couple of bucks is what he's saying. Mike? <laughs> I agree, Dave. Thank you. Because I want to look like I know what I'm doing on my way to dinner. Fine. Time. You and I can not. You know what? No. No. Uh-uh. No, you don't get that. No chance. All right. Bring it home, Matt. Yeah, essentially, heavy cardboard after dark, but we're calling it the Glory to Rome Sessions, but yes. All right, so that's it. So there you go. Pay those, fellas. 11 guilders. And nine. Nine guilders. And it is your honor for the first bid on that, ma'am, for 14. Mm -hmm. Was that your bid? 14. Okay. Um, I will go 15. Okay, so that's me for 15. 40 back, please.
And I get two. Yep. Thank you. And Amanda starts with you. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Don't be careful here because you might get stuck with it. Seventeen. Pass. Pass. All right. Two bucks a piece for you and I. All right. Oof. You paying cash, man? I'm paying okay. cash on those. One and two. Thank you. And nobody home there. You got that. Good. And Matt, you can go ahead and pay for that one. Amanda starts with you. Fourteen. I'll go fifteen. Good. Okay, mine for fifteen. Can I get two, please? <sighs> Thank you. Ten back, please. All right. All right. So that's all the buying. So adjust the price levels. It looks like white's gonna drop. Looks like yellow slot right in there. Yep. There we go. One hundred and billion dollars. Those <laughs> white. And market card. Crash. Most expensive is dropped by two. So to Mitch. It's only one. That is one. That's one, baby. Oh. Excuse me. Well, wait. Two. It gets worse. Yes. Ouch. Glory to Rome game. <laughs> Refill, please. And we do shuffle up the discards if we run out. Can't wait to do Noya Heimat, too. <laughs> this has got the record now for three. All right. Well, the game can end at any time because there are three left yeah, at this point now. Sudden death. Right? Oh, I'm, I'm glad I can sell my tulips this round and get out of them at, uh, at a steep... Discount? Discount, yeah. There we go. All right. All oh, right. you should have paid 13 apparently, according to the uh, UO4 box. <laughs> From where? Uh, Chris, uh, Christopher, Christopher says, Mike bought a yellow B and paid only 9 Oh, it was a B. You bought a yellow B? Uh, I bought a yellow C and a blue and a red, red B. B. Okay. Paying thirteen and nine. Okay, so we're good. No, oh, they can't see that. Hold on, bring them down here. There you go. So nope, we're good. Cool. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. Uh, okay, first player moves and selling. They're arguing about the how it, if if it should have dropped that much. Yellow should be on the five, I think. It will drop two spaces exactly if it can. It just skips full spaces when landing, not when counting. Uh, let me double check the uh, market here. Hold on oh, one second. Bird comes through again. Thank you. <laughs> See? Yes, looking at the example, that is true. Yeah. So when so it would drop there if it could, but it can't. So it drops one. And that actually is the second drop as well. So that's Sweet. one or two per the example. Good call. Way I to retcon go. my glory to Rome. Okay. Delete. It's the first one that's been erased. It is. In history. And, wow. And, this and stream has had it all tonight. And, and it wasn't even Paul that's protecting his prediction here either. All right. <laughs> all right. So now we go into selling. Starting with Amanda. Do you wish to sell? Hmm. Yes. I think so. <laughs> yes. Seven. All right. So seven guilders for Amanda. Despair to Rome. Um. Okay. So if I do so... 14, 15, 1, 11. You know what? Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> hmm. 
Yep, I'm selling. I took a bath. You know what? I'm not. Because if I'm already going to take a bath, I might as well roll the dice on it and really, like, go whole hog taking a bath. I'm not going to sell. That's it. Like, take a bath in a swimming pool? You're pretty much. In the ocean. Yep. I'll go ahead and sell these. Okay. So, you're looking at 22 for that, Matt? Mm -hmm. Mike? Okay. Just bring the tulips to Rome. Exactly. Oh, man, I have played this horribly tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. There's literally nothing on the board that will make one of those collectors. Um. <laughs> Wait, why I sold those back? <laughs> I, was well, for, I was hoping for a three to pop up. Well, if, and didn't, so go yeah. away. <laughs> if that's the case... Let's sell these two off. All right, looks like 27. It does indeed. Is that it? That is all. All right, going into the buying, starting with you, Amanda. As a reminder, this can happen <clears throat> any event now at this point. Sudden death. Uh, I'm not willing to say that, James, but we'll, we'll talk at the end of the game. And I'm debating if I want to do any more. Stand by. I do not. Done. That's it. Mike? Wow. The one thing we do ask is if you guys do order these through Mo Ideas, just mention you saw the stream. We'd appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Wow. Aggressive. Oh, okay. Amanda? I want to bid twice. You're right. No way. Yeah. No way, sir. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm good with that. All right. So, no. Nope. So oh, wait. No, I'm second this turn. I apologize. So continue, please. Worth nothing, the, you say. The, the, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> if, if that bubble bursts, mm -hmm. everything that we're buying right now is worth zilch, zilch, zip, no, nah. well, I'm good. Really? Well, if we're going to have a runaway battle, it's going to be on this one. Okay. So we start the auction here, starting with uh, fellas. So Matt, go for it. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Cash. Fifteen? Paying cash for it? Yep. Okay. okay. Financing now would be kind of silly. Collecting five, right? Uh, five from what was that? Yeah, uh, no, uh, fifteen. It's four. All right? It's a C? It was a white C. It was a mm -hmm. white C. Yeah, white C. White B, sorry. White B. Okay. Yeah. Yes, five. Okay, there five. we go. I was like, no, the starting bid was 11. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, it starts with Amanda here, and bid is eight minimum. Eight. Nine. <laughs> Ten. Pass. 
Yes. Take him by two. Uh, three. Oh. Cur- bids ten. So you take that. Are you paying cash or financing? I'm financing. Okay, so we need ten on this, please. Down a little, Amanda. There we go. All right, so it now goes to the uh, the heavy duty one, and mm-hmm. to the death. Go ahead, Amanda. Eight. Uh, twelve. And the par is seven. It is. Thirteen. Pass. Pass. I'll take three each for me and Amanda. One, two, and three. And three for me. Thirteen guilders. All right. And starting with you, Amanda. Eight. Ten. Pass. I will pay the ten. And get my two. And your two for that. Thank you. Yep. All right. Well, we'll see how it goes, y'all. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is all the buying. So we adjust the price levels. It looks like red's dropping. Red going down. Okay. And white goes up. White rising. All right. These white. Before, and I should have been doing this earlier, before I flip this, Amanda, would you like to get that out of hot? Well, it doesn't matter because, yeah, it doesn't matter. I apologize. All right, here we go. Red goes up. All right. New shipment arrives. Two events left. Ooh, the variegated red, too. Red is in season again. (laughs) <laughs> well, maybe it's yellow that's in season who knows all right so yeah, about the same really now we go into uh now mm-hmm. past the first player marker and all right it ended up paying off for me so i will sell these three to the collector there you go so 43 Yep, that's going to be, yep, 33 and 10, so 43, make it a 50, nope, yes, make it a 50. I might not win, but at least I won't embarrass myself now, so, and there's 7. Cool. So all of those go away, and... I didn't put the pillow pillow block. It'll be fine. I'm done. Any other selling, Matt? Yep, I'll go ahead and sell that for 16. Yep. And Mike? Well, it's 50 50 now. I'm going to liquidate. All right, so you're looking at 11 and 22 for 33 total. 35. 5, 60. Yep. Amanda, do you wish to sell anything? I'll take this out of hog. So she gets a buck. Okay. Oh, and the, the new, uh, the scholar, the final one actually that we haven't seen, so now we've seen them all. The scholar says that three different uh, color tulips of the same rank and variety. So it's gotta be like C1, C1, C1 of three different colors or C2, C2, B2, whatever. You get the idea. All right, so I start this off and uh, hmm. Done. Oh, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hmm. 
Oh, that doesn't work, does it? There ain't no red down there. Mm -mm. Mm. You know what? I passed. I'm not placing any out there. Mike or Matt? I'm doing the same thing. Pass. Amanda? What do you want? Anything you want. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this is a different ending from the last time we played. A bit. Um, hmm. Oh, no, okay, all right, yeah. I guess I'll pass too. All right, second time around, I pass. God, that kills me. Mm -hmm. You look like you actually passed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will pass too. Negatory, good buddy. All right. Wow. Everyone, see, the problem is because of the order in which mm -hmm. these dropped out, there, there's no way to no make combinations. Combinations. I have yeah. three cards in my hand. I the, still hold, couldn't make them. Hold on. There is a possibility. Yeah, if, there is. If it doesn't the crash, yellow. there's a possibility. Yeah. That would have been the only way. But the yellow next. for this. No, that's B1, B2, B1. It says oh, it B1. doesn't. A, no, any Bs. Any Bs. Oh, that's the but only way that could have gone. But it would have to be next. The, yeah, tool, yeah. the bubble yeah. would not be have so, first. So, $28, 28 Gilder gamble. gamble. Yeah. Exactly. So, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so, it looks like yellow's going to drop. Oh, and rise. then you lose. And then red rises. All those wipe. And, and boom. boom. We did we did right then. Yep. <laughs> we, we we everyone gambled correctly. So nobody nobody bought it. Mm -mm. That's where I'm I'm That's interesting. Wow. All right, so we go into final scoring. Seventy two. Wow, I actually did so not embarrass 20, myself. 50, 60, 74. Oh. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> so everybody bring your money up so everybody can see. Really? Yeah, Sixty nine. Are you kidding me? I am legitimately shocked. I thought I was in third place the entire game. Mm. Didn't complain about it, just that's where I thought I was. So somehow, I have no idea, so I win with 90. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amanda second. With how much? I don't know, 74. 74. Okay, 74 for Amanda. 72. 69. 69. That's wow, really close. that is nice. completely Three different. Three here, two here, and yeah. Wow, that is... Really crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll start with Matt. Uh, this is your first game. It's my Tulip it's Bubble. my first game. Okay. I didn't quite I, I didn't start seeing the deeper strategies till I saw what you guys were doing mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, there there is some benefit. I I didn't I didn't finance a thing. Oh, you didn't? I did didn't you? Finance a single thing. Probably should have in a couple and, of cases because I saw the benefit to it. You ended up in last. Because right? you can actually make money doing that if yeah. it goes up. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I probably should have done that a little bit. I always play conservative usually on these kinds of games on my first game <laughs> every time. Um, I don't go running for the loans. Right, right, Just, right. Um, Risk but, adverse. Yeah. Right. Um, especially after, until I played the first time because I don't want to look dumb. Well, sure, but, fair point. Yeah. No, totally um, fair, right? Although, yeah, this one, this one you definitely have to take risks. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course. And, Calculated yeah. risk, right? Yeah. Um, and I should have taken more. But um, the first two, the first two, I had a definite path to those and, and got them fairly easily. Um, then after that, I was like, okay, now what, now do, what I do? do I do? Where do I see the path? I couldn't see the deeper path that was there until a little bit later in the game, but by that point, it was a little too late to, mm -hmm. to do much. But I like it a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the more interesting bidding games I, we've played lately, except for that one. I mean, like, I, I can say, yeah. Um, there's been two really interesting games with bidding involved in both the same company. Right. Mike? Well, on, so on the second play, we had a dramatically different game uh, mm -hmm. this time than the, than the last time. 
uh, I was more concentrated this time on defense than in our first game, uh, actually, because, you know, first game, learn the rules, and then start playing the players. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. you know, as you do. Right. So there is blind randomness in the game, in, in, the, in the draws, but you see it a turn ahead, so you have mm -hmm. time to adapt to it, so good there. And then you have the blind card draw from the deck down there. But if it's going to be Tulip Bubble, you've got to have the shot to the head. There, there, there has to, to be some amount of uncontrollable randomness. There, there I mean, otherwise, does. What's mm -hmm. the, a bubble doesn't work, right, it, by default. Exactly. Um, but even with that, wow, those auctions on these cards and picking which cards... To whether to place your bid tokens to the left or to the right of your players that went in front of you, I think is very strategic. Mm -hmm. And I think that is actually more important than the randomness that comes up. So, yeah. And so is, for example, whenever I made sure that I won that C, mm -hmm. because I knew that you, because you had just sold all of your cards, mm -hmm. so I knew that I had to win all three of those to be able to fulfill that because I knew that turn order would be at you first mm -hmm. before I would, because if we, we, if we both had the C's, you'd be able to sell them mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, and I got stuck on that one because I was last. Right. I, so, I wanted that one too. So, so. I made sure that I, I was going to go as high as I needed to to make sure that I won that within, you know, within reason. I, I was right there with you, but I made the wrong calculation as to even if I went down a few guilders on that would have been should have pressed forward a little mm -hmm. so you learn the value of the bid so for well, me well my gamble paid off oh mario what oh Hi. cool so my gamble paid off because mm -hmm. in the last round if if the the bubble had burst one round prior i would have ended up uh 43 guilders less mm -hmm. than what i had because i actually was able to profit the thirty-three for that, yep. and for the uh, for the la or for the uh, plus ten on that. So the fact that I was, I, I had a sixty-six percent shot mm -hmm. of the gamble paying off. Okay, I mean that's positive EV, right? Because I figured my my thought process was I'm not going to win anyways, mm -hmm. and so I might as well go ahead and just try and do something. Had I not done that, I would have lost. So even though I, I was wrong in where I stood as far as like where, where I was, actually I may have been right at that point. Um, I, yeah. I, I gambled correctly thinking, okay, I, this will improve my position and I have a two third shot of it improving my position. So it's not a, I mean, again, it's positive EV being a former poker player. That's a, that's a gamble that you should make, right? Mm -hmm. If you think you're not in a position in which you're locked down first, mm -hmm. then I made the right decision. So I like the fact that that makes you take that into a consider or should make you take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. It's real. It's, it's beautiful. The, the game, the gameplay itself is beautiful and the cards, the art is beautiful. I, and I think oh, yeah. you could play this like a family could play this, right? Mm -hmm. With you know, late teenage kids and mm -hmm. up. You don't have to go layers deep. Yes. It's it's as layers deep as, as you, you want, want it. Mm -hmm. it to be. Yeah, which it can be I think is pretty cool. Zero layers, or I know that you know that I know that you know. Exactly. So people are accusing me of a slow roll, <laughs> not on purpose. Hashtag bad teacher. Hashtag bad teacher. <laughs> so all right, hi Asher. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, um, definitely enjoy it. Uh, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. um, thanks again to Mo Ideas for sponsoring the playthrough as well as for the review copy. It's uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. both. Yeah. I'll be honest, both their games mm -hmm. uh, that one that we got at Gen Con and the other that they sent after. Uh, I, I'm a fan there. Definitely heavy, heavy thinky filler, mm -hmm. right? Both of these. Yep. So, yeah, sure. Come on and here, thanks buddy. to them also for the giveaway copy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, you want to tell folks how to do the giveaway? Sure. Go to heavycardboard.com forward slash tulip to um, sign up. You'll just need to put in your name, email address, and how you discovered Heavy Cardboard. And you will be, and 
in, entered in the drawing. We will give it away on, I, I put it on the page, I believe it's the, the 10th or the 11th. I don't remember which one. Okay, so you have until then to enter. Okay, fair enough. Cool. That work? All right, any questions here from the peanut gallery before we get out of here? Um, no, it's good to see uh, Mario, which uh, for those that don't know, he's a patron of ours that lives down in Puerto Rico, yeah. obviously. Puerto Water. Rico has been devastated by Hurricane Maria. So um, if somebody, Matthew, if you want to link to the charity that we've been promoting for uh, the disaster relief for Puerto Rico, definitely would appreciate that. And to everybody watching, both live and after the fact, we really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun for us. Hopefully you guys can make an informed decision now that you've seen the game. Mm -hmm. And as Mike said, the game's played out completely different from the last time we played it. Drastically different. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks to Mo Ideas, and thanks to our 468 patrons. Check it out, pledgehc.com. We definitely would appreciate the support. So, on behalf of myself, Amanda, Matt, and Mike. And Asher. And Asher. Y'all have a good night. Take care, y'all. Good night, Bye. everybody. Bye.